Duncan joining us on the phone this morning. We have, uh, representing uh, Congressional District 2, we have Congresswoman Yvette Harrell on the phone with us this morning. Good morning, ma'am. How are you doing today? I am doing great. It's so good to be back on with you. Yeah, and uh, good news is uh, we were just talking in, during the commercial break here, and uh, you've actually been able to, to, you're back in the district now, so now you've, you've spent some time kind of seeing and dealing with uh, New Mexico issues, not just necessarily, you know, stuff going on in Congress right now. Right, yeah, it's always nice to be back in New Mexico, and it's, it's you know, been a whirlwind. I've been... Uh, in TRC, of course, the fire update up there with the black fire and mm-hmm. made a trip down to Lordsburg to see folks down there and Carlsbad and just, you know, kind of getting all over the district, talking to folks and making sure that we're addressing the needs and keeping them informed, really, as to what's happening in Congress. And we're in recess until, I believe, the 6th of June. So it's a good thing, though, because anytime we're not there, you know, we're not <laughs> passing bad laws. So it's just, we can all breathe easy for a few days here and realize Congress won't be doing anything radical. That's right. Um, so, but it's good to be home for sure. Good deal. Well, um, just uh, curiosity, what what kind of updates we get on the uh, when you're in TRC for the fire? Are they is it is it still uh, pretty, uh, uh, or are they starting to get some containment on it now? Yeah, that fire is just terrific. Of course, um, I went up Friday evening. They had a big um, overview. They had the law enforcement, forest service, all the file firefighters there, the community. And sadly, they said because of the rugged conditions and the wind and some of the elements they're dealing with, they said there's a good chance that particular fire could go until the monsoon season starts. Oh, wow. They have uh, in place, I think, a very good uh, response of a ready, set, go kind of a platform. So they've, they've announced, you know, they've let all the residents, all the property owners know to be, you know, ready. And then if the sheriff gives them the set, signal that means you know start start kind of getting your belongings what you want what you need um and that way if it gets to go meaning the fire line has gotten too close to the properties then they're kind of ready so it gives i think the property owners a little bit of time to manage and i just you know just continue to keep praying for the communities and and the firefighters and all of those volunteers involved with it but it's um the one thing i did learn is that fire, the black fire, there was some talk that it had also been started by a control burn, but we were told in the meeting the other night it was actually human caused and it is under investigation. Now, however, the the Hermit's Peak fire, the really big one up Mm -hmm. a little further north, that one was caused by a control burn. And I had talked to the chief of the Forest Service, Chief Moore. We met with him in my office actually um, Thursday morning before I flew out here. And we just were very concerned, gave him, uh, you know, our concerns and how this happens and what are they going to do to correct it. And mm-hmm. I believe that they're responsible for the damages uh, caused, you know, the, the cost to this fire. And I think that they should take full responsibility for it. Yeah. And so they're obviously investigating that is what he told us. But, you know, it just makes no sense, Mike, to see people doing control burns when we have these arid conditions and these high winds. <laughs> that we've seen all over the state. And I was down in Carlsbad yesterday in Artesia and that wind that came through there, just unbelievable. Yeah. It, it, it does seem to buck against common sense, doesn't it? <laughs> right. Right. But you know, they check common sense at the door sometimes <laughs> in these federal agencies for sure. Sure. So, you know, you know I, and of course then we're left to pick up the pieces. I actually heard uh, on the news last night, the, the fire in Lincoln, uh, the, the redos of the fire that happened there with, uh, all of that. Um, uh, I saw that and that one was caused by down power lines, and so uh, I think what I what I saw in the news was there's private citizens now sending lawsuits to uh, the power company because uh, because of the down. Like uh, I know one couple lost their home altogether, and I think they yeah. that was the, the particular one they were showing on the news. But I'm guessing you're going to see a lot more of that once uh, some of the aftermath of some of these fires start coming out and you know once responsibility is is assigned in that uh, i think we're going to see a lot more of that around the state not less of it so yeah that's probably true and it's just so unfortunate you know just the fire season obviously in new mexico started way earlier than normal and of course there just doesn't seem to be any moisture in the forecast it looks like i think roswell got a little bit of rain yesterday and i sure wish that would have been a little further north or even up here in Ridoso, I'm up in Ridoso right this moment, and it is so dry. Um, you know, of course, they have water restrictions in place. Sure. So it's just, you know, time to buckle down, pray for 
pray for rain, but certainly keeping everybody in our thoughts and prayers because of just these these catastrophic losses all over the place. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely got to... Uh, uh, it, it's it's about being, uh, you know, just good stewards of the land and everything else. We have right. to... Uh, um, we live in a desert. We live in a dry community. You know, much of New Mexico is like that. That's the way it is. And and so we have to uh, act accordingly and, and use science, technology, and, and, and be good stewards of it. And, and, and that's, you know, we're, we are very, and this is something Roswell's very blessed with, with the aquifers and all that. Now, don't get me wrong, we can't be, you know, turning on the fire hoses and just let water run freely down the street. Sure. But at the same time, we're pretty lucky. We 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 get more water than other communities in this in the state. But uh, right. But that that being said, we 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 got to be good stewards with it. We got to do all, and so it's and and so doing these things like you know preventing the, the fires. Fireworks certainly. We're going to be talking fireworks season here, <laughs> and uh, I got to be honest. I I don't think it's a great idea right now to be doing many fireworks in the state of New Mexico in July here, unless something changes between now and then. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. And, yeah. and you know, when I had that meeting with Chief Moore the other day, I, you know, clearly and t- pointed out the obvious, which he already knows is, you know, forest management plays a role in this. And he has actually been in committee meetings saying, you know, we need to get into these national forests and clean up the forest floor and take out this low grade lumber, you know, timber, the, you know, the six, seven inch circumference that's just sucking up the, the uh, water. You know, we're just, we're not doing much to, com- uh, protect our watersheds and of course you look at the condition of the lincoln national forest and others and and here's what is just so crazy mike this this bill we introduced the biochar bill to do just that go in start cleaning up our forest bed get that Mm -hmm. dead lumber off the bottom of the forest floor and then utilize it in the uh, agricultural industries for biochar because once it's um, you know, crunched up and, and uh, you process, you can actually put it on the crops and it retains water. It's okay. very helpful. And this is a, a kind of a common sense approach to, you know, a win, win, win. It cleans mm-hmm. up the forest. It protects watershed. It helps the ag operations. And yet we cannot get movement on that, which makes no sense. And that's why it's just so frustrating because common sense just does not you know, show itself in Washington D.C. at all. Yeah, yeah. Can I, I want to. I, yeah, I've talked to some some people that are pretty. I've had on the show here, and we've had some great conversations about some of these various topics with with you know maintaining our our wildlife and and these kind of and even talking with some you know gubernatorial candidates on on their ideas on some of this stuff and. And what I'm kind of learning, and I don't know if this is something you're hearing or learning too, it's it, it's like, yeah, okay, we talk with environmentalists and, and they say, all right, yeah, we want to make these wilderness lands and return them to wilderness and all. That's like wonderful in concept. And, and, right. and, and, but what what happens is is man's already been here. Man is is has has put their footprint in these areas. And at this point, if we just up and leave, we do more harm than good. Because right. of and so what we need to do is is what we're talking about and what a lot of what you're saying and what a lot of people are saying is we need that mitigation of thinning the forest when need to getting that debris maybe even bringing lumber companies back to New Mexico and and you know they did the clear cutting and all that and then they rebuild these forests and they just you know what I mean they don't they don't build them right they just plant a bunch of trees and now we've got you know, this can contributing to fires and stuff too. Uh, the way sure. things were redone. So it's, it's almost like, um, you know, maybe the, 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 the ecological and, 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 and right way to do it, the green and money way to do it is keeping man in there, but doing things like, you know, bringing in lumber companies to do back to hauling lumber out. But instead of clear cutting, it's more, uh, surgical and, and and working with the environment departments to making sure that they're they're taking the right trees out and leaving the good ones still and things like I mean right. that kind of thing I, I think that's kind of the more approach we need to take on this to fix it rather than uh, no no we just need to pull out and let let God take over in there you know what I mean right well and absolutely a proactive approach especially in these areas that have communities and people living in and around the forest. And here's the thing, though, when you mention the environmentalist and so forth, we do more damage to the environment by letting these fires burn and the emissions and think about the loss of property, yeah. human life, 
and wildlife, you know, we tear up and let burn all the water. You know, we, we do things. We have our ranchers putting out waters, you know, for the, for the wildlife and their livestock. And yet when the fire comes to burns all of that up. So we've really done more damage to the environment than had we gone in and been proactive and smart about protecting our forests and managing them in a smart way. But it just, it, again, makes no sense. I mean, how can you even justify the amount of, of emissions going up I and mean, look what we're doing to the atmosphere right now, mm-hmm. you know, and they're not saying a word and it's, well, we could have maybe prevented some of this in, in a couple of these different fires had we had better forest management. And you look at uh, Mascalero, we always point to Mascalero, how mm-hmm. well they manage their forest. Beautiful. You know, a, a healthy forest has about 45 to 50 trees per acre. We've mm-hmm. got in some cases, you know, 500. So it just, and then we wonder why we're running out of water you know, why the Pecos isn't, you know, flowing anymore, why we haven't got the opportunities to capture and and uh, conserve water. It's just, it makes no sense. But, you know, again, these are the policies that the environmentalists are pushing, and we are so outnumbered. But I hope one day we'll, we'll see common sense prevail so we can see some, some real, true, you know, forest management. And um, it just, in fact, what's very concerning to those in California is the big redwoods. Those sequoia, they only grow in California, and they lost, I think, I'm not exactly sure the percent, but it was, you know, like a 20% of that forest uh, that last summer. I mean, we've got to figure out ways to protect these, these, these trees that are just so iconic for our, our country, um, but yet we turn the blind eye, and then we don't have the, the opportunities to do the right thing because the environmentalists have a bigger voice. And more money. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 very frustrating, and well, it's it's one of those things. Uh, the when we all get frustrated, but um, it's an election year. This is the year yeah. that people get to uh, tell tell our elected officials ha- how they want things to go. So um, yeah. this is why uh, your primaries coming up. Pay very much close attention to people running, and certainly in our general election in November, make sure that. Uh, you know, you're you're doing your research and 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 choosing people that really line up with the things you that you believe in. And and when we talk right. about these kind of things, remember that and remember because uh, and, and this is I know you and I have had this conversation. We all want the best for our community. We just sure don't, we do. We just don't agree on how to do that. And and you got to really pay attention and in, in the devil's in the details on listening to what each of these folks are saying and saying we need to do it this way. And if it sounds like a uh, like just a placated answer versus something that's uh, a legitimate idea here, then then you need to to, to vote accordingly about that kind of stuff. So. Right. I would say listen to what they say, see what they've done, mm-hmm. um, proof is in the pudding, and find out what the game plan is moving forward because exactly. it's easy to say we need to do this or that. But, you know, how do we get there? Well, let's introduce a piece of legislation. Let's push back on some of these environmental policies. Let's ensure that we have more localized control in terms of forest management. You know, I mean, maybe set up a, you know, memorandum of understanding between counties and a forest service, something, but we've got to get some plans in play so that we can protect our natural resources for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I only got a couple more minutes with you here, but um, uh, is there any other stuff that, that you're seeing, Rainer? I, I know uh, you guys aren't in session, uh, I'm sure. Uh, obviously, the tragedy in Texas yesterday—that's yeah. effect that's impacting a lot of people's lives this morning. Um, uh, I, I'm sure. Uh, have you guys heard? Uh, you know, I know that you're not in session, but is there any other details you you guys are hearing on the Congress side that that uh, that it's we're sharing or or any information? Yeah, it's it just it's heartbreaking, honestly. Just yeah. it really made me just sick yesterday to hear what happened, and absolutely with that that you know with that gun. Uh, violence yesterday and obviously what happened in New York um, just a few weeks ago, you can bet that Congress is going to be uh, gearing up to do some type of very hardcore overreach gun control. And here's the deal. I'm all for working across the aisle. If we're looking at the broader picture, you know, how about mental health institutions? How about behavioral health? How about providing the funds necessary to help people that actually need that? I will not support anything that infringes on our Second Amendment right. Mm -hmm. We are not going to punish law-abiding citizens. I mean, it would be like uh, eliminating the auto industry because there have been car crashes that have ended up in fatality. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just typical. This will probably be, um, unfortunately, instead of being there for the families and and really being um, 
proactive in thinking how we can help a community, it will probably be a knee-jerk reaction in Congress to Mm -hmm. come for the guns. And that's not the answer. There's not a law on the books. There's not one we could pass that would keep somebody with an evil heart from doing exactly what happened. But I think we could do better when it comes to providing behavioral health, when we uh, can provide services in that arena. Mm -hmm. I think that's somewhere we just don't talk about that enough. And there is a definite need for it. Um, So we'll definitely be hearing, I think, more and more about that. And I just hope they don't politicize this and use it as a campaign tool, because that would be so disrespectful to the families and and to the community. Well, unfortunately, until we learn this lesson, uh, yesterday's tragedy was not a gun problem. It was a mental health problem. And until we address it as such, uh, we're going to continue to have these problems. As long as you keep treating gun problems or calling mental health problems gun problems, we're going to continue to have these problems. We've got, uh, you right. know, it, it, this isn't about Democrat, Republican. This is just the truth. Um, we, it is. We, cert- we, we certainly need to address mental health. Um, we need to, we need to throw, uh, uh, we need to blow it up like Susan G. Coleman breast cancer. That's what I keep saying. Right. And get the pink ribbons and the whole nine and, and throw gazillions of dollars at mental health. That's how we solve these problems, not limiting on how many AK-47s you can own. That's that's, that's not right. going to fix it. And there's no way to monitor this. And here's the thing. Instead of spending millions and millions of dollars and tearing down hotels in, our, in Alaska or building golf courses or gazebos, why aren't we investing that money in the communities around the country to provide these behavioral health centers or mental mm-hmm. health centers? That's what we've missed the mark. But always they go back to punishing the law-abiding gun owner. And I think we have to have an absolute transparent and honest conversation with ourselves. And so we need to be thoughtful and prayerful for the families that have lost their lives. But we cannot just do a knee-jerk reaction. And certainly, um, in fact, on the committee I'm sitting on right now, just uh, jumped off for this call, um, there is someone making a, a, a committee speech about the violence yesterday Um, And so I can assure you that will be at the top of everyone's list when they Mm -hmm. go back to Washington in a couple of weeks. Yep, absolutely. Well, uh, we'll let you get back to your meeting. (laughs) I'm sure you can't wait to get back in. (laughs) Right. right. Well, I just appreciate the time and it's always a pleasure to visit with you and um, just kind of talk about things that are happening in the district. I know people are interested and we'll we'll just kind of keep monitoring these fires and see what happens. But I'll certainly be back on with you sooner than later, I'm sure. And, and, um, I I'll obviously always appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you, man. We do. Uh, we love, uh, we look forward and love talking with you about this stuff. And, uh, we appreciate all you're doing to represent the, the people, uh, in our district here. We, we do appreciate it. You're just welcome. All right. <laughs> well, you have a blessed day and I will talk to you soon. You do the same. Don't work too hard. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. All thank right. you, Bye-bye ma'am. Now. Bye-bye. All right, that was uh, Congresswoman Yvette Harrell uh, joining us here. She's actually uh, in district right now. Is Congress not in session? She's working on virtually and doing uh, a lot of New Mexico issues there. So big thank you to her for visiting with us this morning. All right, let's. Uh